As a beginner filmmaker or content creator, being able to shoot and edit an exciting looking montage is a really important skill. Maybe you're making a travel video about a city and you want to communicate the essential essence of the place. But how do you do that with a smartphone without them coming out kind of bland and boring? How do you make them feel cinematic so it looks like you're using a bigger, more expensive camera? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five essential tips. As well, I'm going to talk about the equipment that I used. Let's do it. Okay, so here's my five tips for shooting an urban montage. <laughs> Tip number one is to make sure that each shot has a subject. Don't just film everything in one messy shot. Focus on something specific, whether it's a person, or an interesting building, or a distinctive landmark, maybe some food in a restaurant window, or a neon sign, or a street entertainer. Use attractive and effective framing to make sure that the audience knows what they're supposed to be looking at. The biggest trick that nobody tells you is that actually 80% of the work is done by what's in the frame. So it makes sense to go to areas in the city where there's lots of visually interesting stuff for you to look at. When you have lots of characterful and colorful subjects to film, it just makes your job so much easier. People, vehicles, and dramatic architecture it means that you have lots of variety and subjects that are exciting to film. And if they're exciting to film, then usually they're exciting to watch for your audience. So tip number three is to find interesting angles. So don't just shoot everything at eye level, which is what most beginners do. Find an angle that makes your subject look even more interesting. Like this shot that I got looking down from a bridge as the boat goes underneath. It was when the boat suddenly appears into frame. It's kind of fresh and dramatic. I was in Chinatown in London uh, where they have these Chinese lanterns hanging up. And of course they're really striking visually and quite often a lot of tourists are using them as a backdrop for their videos. But I took a sort of more interesting angle. So I went underneath and filmed directly up and that just gives you a more unique view. It makes your shot stand out from the ordinary. And that actually leads me to my next tip which is to find connections. So after this Chinese lantern shot, 
I found another lamp that was hanging above. So again, I went underneath and filmed upwards and actually rotated the camera a bit. And then when I came to edit, I was able to create a match cut. So a match cut is when you go from one shot to another, but the subject of the first shot matches in position and shape the subject of the second shot. And this just helps to tie your montage together in a more visually coherent way. It just gives the audience a sense that there's a plan to this, there's a structure, and that will help them to feel more engaged. It feels less like it's just a bunch of random shots that don't have any connection to each other. So my fifth and final and important tip is that if you can, try to film in the evening going into nighttime. And many photographers and cinematographers choose this period of the day to capture their cinematic looking shots. So why do we do this? Well, the reason is that we get this really nice light as the sun is coming down. And as well, filming at night means that you get a contrast to your daytime shots. Plus you get to shoot all these beautiful city lights. And these look really cool, especially if you're going for the film look, which is what I used in my urban montage sequence. Because now you can add this bloom around the lights and you can use this effect called halation. And I do talk about these in depth for members on my Patreon. So these nighttime shots are gonna contrast really well with your daytime shots. And you're gonna get both sides of the city because quite often a city will change dramatically in the nighttime and it has a sort of different character to it. In this part of the sequence, I even use this transition from day to night in a match cut. So those are my five easy tips. And if you follow them, your urban montage sequences are gonna really pop. If you want more tips, you can follow my in-depth making of tutorials for members on Patreon. Even if you're a complete beginner, my courses will get you shooting really professional looking videos within days. And as an extra bonus to members on Patreon, you now get access to the Mobile Motion Film Festival next year. You can learn to shoot films, you can shoot the films, you can submit a film, you can watch all the films, and you get to judge the films as well. And that is all included in your membership. For this, I used a 1.33 times anamorphic lens plus a variable ND filter by Shiftcam. I use the anamorphic lens because it goes hand in hand with this film look. You know, it's not just about making your video widescreen because you can actually easily do that just by cropping the video. The Xiaomi interface even has a widescreen setting. So the reason we use the anamorphic lens is because it adds character. The problem with digital images is that professional cinematographers often find them too clean and too clinical. But if you use an anamorphic conversion lens, there's blurry areas, there's lens flares, there's chromatic aberrations, distinctive curves, and even the vignette is kind of more natural looking. And this is all part of the film look character. The ND filter is needed for daylight shots. So you don't use these for nighttime shots. In daylight, your shutter speed is usually too fast and that takes away any nice motion blur, which again is part of the organic film look. So basically the ND filter stops some of the light and that slows your shutter speed, which then adds more motion blur to the video. And also I graded in the film look using the Dehancer plugin, which you can use with like Premiere, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, it's a pretty good Xiaomi. Um, Mid-range, the 13T Pro has got a kind of fake leather back to it. So that's quite nice for gripping. You're not gonna see any fingerprints on it. And cameras, I mean, pretty much like you usually get from Xiaomi, the sort of recent Xiaomi devices. The only thing that I did notice that's changed is the user interface. You kind of swipe up and down on the screen and it brings up the settings. And I actually quite liked that. Other than that, the video quality is pretty good. I shot pretty much everything in 60 frames per second so that I could choose to slow it down if I wanted. And I did notice that the frame rates coming out were a little bit under, so like 57, just slightly. But I didn't notice any problems with um, you know motion, like juddering or anything when I was editing. The only issue when you're mounting an anamorphic lens using one of these universal mounts is that it's gonna cover the screen a little bit, but because you've got this swipey thing, you can swipe to get the settings, so you don't have to worry about these settings here. You can access it here, you can change frame rate here. Um, so that's pretty cool. As far as the shift cam goes, the shift cam 1.33 anamorphic, 
it doesn't have the nicest lens flares in my opinion. One thing I don't like about these kind of lenses, not just shift cam, but a number of them, like this just moves so easily. Uh, so it's very easy to knock. I also use the shift cam variable ND with its adapter. So it just fits easily over the lens. Like that. When you want to adjust the variable ND filter, the lens obviously wobbles around. So it'd be nice if they just locked the lens in place so it didn't, you know, move around so easily. Other than that, it's pretty good. It's a pretty decent lens and the the ND filter is good too.